Well, hi, this is Pastor Rick. I'm glad you could join us today. I wanted to answer or try to answer a question. What's the beginning of living hope? I mean, how do you get in on having some hope while all the terrible and disturbing news keeps hitting us every day? In fact, you might not even have a hope that's living. You might have a hope that's pretty much gasping for its last breath. And I think there's a lot of people that are struggling right now. Uh, or you might say, I don't, just don't have any hope at all. And you might even feel like giving up. Well, I want, I want to encourage you today, do not give up. Keep looking up. Don't allow yourself to be discouraged by circumstances, but look to the one who has this whole world in the palm of his hand and he's the one who's able to help you and me to get through it and get through it successfully. Where hope begins in you or in me is when you begin to understand how precious it is. If you've lost hope, then you might begin to understand what I mean when I say how precious is hope in our life. Because if you're discouraged and you feel like just giving up, um, for example, I, I was called by the fire department, I'm a fire chaplain, to the home of a family and a 16-year-old son had taken his own life by hanging himself in the family garage. I got to tell you, I was very, very sad for this whole family. His 13-year-old brother had come into that home and had discovered him, and it broke my heart. I, I just wished that somehow I could have been there to help him, to encourage him, to counsel him, and to tell him, please don't take a permanent solution to a temporary problem. There is help available for you, and we're available to help you. The night before this happened, we had actually had a pizza party at our church for youth, and we had a revival preacher who was uh, talking about how to help youth and we, uh, he even spoke to the teenagers who came that night, and I was so wishing that he had been there, but he wasn't. So how do people begin to get hope when they're so discouraged they feel like giving up? I'm going to read a scripture to you. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 says, Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what? or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that, not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel. Gospel means good news. By the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Even the prophets of the Old Testament searched the scriptures, the, we call it the Bible, looking for fulfillment of salvation in Jesus Christ. The interesting thing for me is when Jesus came, a lot of them didn't even recognize that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the Son of God. And in fact, many of them became persecutors of Jesus Christ himself. But for you and I to have living hope is a work of God. I can't make you have living hope. If I could, I would, but I can't. The living hope I'm talking about is a work of God's Spirit. Peter mentions the Spirit of Christ. It's the same thing. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the, in the Godhead. We say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. There's only one God, by the way. He just exists in three persons. Hard for our mind, because it's little, to begin to comprehend that. The point Jesus was making was that when the Holy Spirit would come, he would be another just like Jesus. Well, if you want to know what's the Holy Spirit like, look to the life of Jesus Christ. He only did his ministry three years. And look, he healed people from lameness. He healed people who were blind. He really... He, set people free from demonic possession. He uh, just he could take uh, five loaves and two fish and feed thousands and thousands of people with it. He was a miracle worker, but he came because he cares about you and he cares about me. It's very personal. Uh, Peter, referring to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Christ, is substantiating a great truth. And it was the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, 
who was working in the prophets of the Old Testament, helping them to understand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. It was the Holy Spirit who gave the prophets a hope that what he was revealing to them, the Holy Spirit was revealing, would certainly come true in the future when the good news of Jesus Christ was preached. You might think, well, so what, Rick? So what? But that's an important truth because the Holy Spirit is the agent of hope. You want to know who's the special agent that can change your life and mine? It's the person of the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, he's real. And he cares about you. He's the one who works hope in us and he makes it living because he takes a person like me who was very discouraged with life. I was contemplating suicide in my own life. And for me, it was God working through a neighbor who reached me and told me, don't give up, to look up. And uh, I'm so grateful for that person who helped me to come to faith in Christ. Now I have a hope in me which is abiding. I mean, it's a hope that says, even when I go through a hard time, suffering or disappointment, discouragement, I know that God is there for me. I'll close with the scripture, Romans 5.5. 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. You can trust him. Put your trust in God. He loves you.